okay failure you will use cases failure cases or failure use whatever you call it as now let us say when you are writing the file on a cluster when you are writing the file on a cluster uh, let me uh, when you are writing the file on a cluster so we have uh, 64 36 we don't have anything again we have 64 here on the fifth let us say 36 7 8 64 36 now here this is our cluster now here the failure use cases now uh, what are the different scenarios that would actually come into picture when you are writing or reading the data let us say when you are writing the data when you are writing the data the data on a cluster so what happens if a node fails so what happens if a node fails what happens if a node fails so this node failure can happen in two ways one is while writing this node failure can happen in two ways one is while writing and second is after you complete the process of the write on a cluster so the failure use cases is that can happen uh, uh, in you know different ways one of the uh, situations is where a node goes down okay and how when you are writing uh, some file on onto that particular block or particular block of that particular node or after writing the entire block of one particular system if that block goes down here sorry that that node goes down here let us say i am writing on this particular node i am writing on this particular node so i have written this 64 gb of data again as i said the writing on a cluster of file would happen parallelly so these two are being you know done at a time but this block being the uh, 36 uh, size is only 36 the size is only 36 now what happens if now this is a little time than this then this now what happens my total size is 100 MB my total file size is 100 MB now this is written fastly and this is a little time taking process because this is 64 but all of a sudden something happens and this note goes down while writing while writing what happened was some there was some problem happened and this went this node went down so now this data is lost and what happens to this data because altogether this file is has to be 100 MB 100 MB right so what happens to the already written data of course when this goes down we can again you know reactivate it or uh, we, we can have it uh, make it live again and we will have that process done but to in to the situation is something like this this node went down while writing but this is already written on the cluster so what happens to this data similarly if we are not talking about the replications yet so what happens while writing the data so what happens is we'll consider this let us say you're trying to download a file in between some power law happens or somehow you shut down the system so what happens to the required amount of some amount of data is being downloaded right so what happens to that we have to obviously delete the data right we have to take that data from the system from that long downloaded half file from the system similarly we call this as a zombie data you know data of no use in fact okay that would be taken care by the framework and will remove the entire file and we do redo the process of writing again we redo the process of writing again this is when you are writing the file okay when you are writing the file if one gets node gets a problem similarly the already written file we will call it as a zombie data we'll have to flush that out and redo the process of writing once again this is one of the fail case scenarios the next is this is while writing now let us see i have written the entire file of 64 and 36 now this file this went down i'm already I already have 
written some data on that particular cluster. Now this went down. So now that would be taken care by the framework. That would be taken care by the framework. In the earlier scenario, again we have to read the process of the right. But here in this scenario, whatever the node that you you know have, that is the beauty of the frame. A framework will not let the user know what are the nodes that have failed in the process of writing or reading. Framework will take care of that. Framework will remember this. Anytime if you have a cluster in a cluster while a processing or uh, uh, if you the, the the failure of any node will will not be known to the will not be known to the client or the user okay so if this goes down the framework will take care of it and the rest of the process would be run so these are the you know uh, two scenarios there could be so many scenarios what happens if the replication uh, node goes down what happens so all these things 70% of the cases the framework would take care of all these situations as a developer administrator would be there he would be working in coordination with the network administrator so those two people actually will look after all these things just to make you understand what are the failure case use cases that's it so this is a brief uh, introduction and the description of how you read the data and you how you write the data on a cluster and these are the uh, you know few of the fail case use case scenarios where you know your need data nodes now on the whole on a name node you have data nodes and you have secondary name node okay if this goes down you have something a replication on secondary name name node and uh, and uh, where it will see that the, the entire information about the clusters is not being lost and you have some data nodes and each data node would have blocks inside it and each blocks would have 64 MB of data on it each file would be divided as 64 MB of blocks so each block when you are writing a file if it gets failed so now the remaining already written would be have to be flushed out by the framework and we call it as a zoom beat data and uh, if you are ha anything happens anything happens uh, during the process of writing or reading that the framework will take care of it so we also should know what are the differences what are the differences between 1x and 2x version of hadoop 1x and 2x version of hadoop now <clears throat> everybody is working on 1x version of hadoop uh, uh, and uh, we have to look at the 2x version of hadoop what is the difference what are the different things that have been implemented in 2x version of hadoop when you install 2x version of hadoop we don't see this job tracker and task tracker altogether we would be looking at some other demons being coming into the picture so there is a huge difference between 1x and 2x so uh, we will also look at what are the differences and how actually uh, 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 we can have this high availability and hadoop federation being implemented in 2x version thank you here we'll see what are the differences between <coughs> Gen 1 Hadoop and Gen 2 Hadoop. So uh, if you wanted to find out what are the differences between Gen 1 and Hadoop and Gen 2 Hadoop, uh, what are the different releases that you have uh, on Gen 1 and Gen 2 Hadoop. So uh, in order to find out, simply go to Google and type in Hadoop download and you'll see something called as Apache Hadoop release. When you come down, when you come down, here we have this Hadoop 2x version being released in the year 2013, in the year 2013, in the month of November. So we have to check. We have lot many, uh, so many releases when it comes to Hadoop. Every year, every month, you'll have one or two releases. So we'll go to 2013. Yes, here this is the release, October 2013 release of 2.20 is available so we call it as the release of 2.x version 2.x version and uh, if you look at what are the things that you have in 2.x version is to recap this release has a number of significant highlights compared to 1.x so this is one of the interview questions what is the difference between 1x, 1x version of hadoop and 2x version of hadoop so here <coughs> 2x version of hadoop we have something called as yarn so in 1x version of Hadoop, we had map radios. Here we have YARN. It's a general purpose resource management system for Hadoop to allow map radios and other 
data processing frameworks and services that means you have something called yarn on top of yarn you have something called as map reduce so you have hdfs on top of hdfs you have yarn on top of yarn you have something called as map reduce we'll understand the architecture of yarn and as well as the map reduce in the coming sessions and the second difference is high availability so when i say high availability again this is when it comes to avoid the concept of single point of failure single point of failure now hdfs federation is instead of having only one name node instead of having one name node for a cluster you can have your cluster being divided and based on the data that you're dealing with you can have <coughs> Uh, depending on your data you can have your individual cluster for that particular data so that this is called as hadoop federation you also have something called as hadoop shop net shop snacks so nfs v3 access to data in hdfs so in version one of hadoop uh, what we have seen is we have something called as name node and secondary name node if anything happens for the name node there is a, a secondary name node which holds the snapshot of the name node but here nfs the scenario is if secondary name node also goes down then what is the question so always hadoop administrator would uh, uh, have one more network mount point in order to avoid the loss in case the data node and sorry secondary name node and data node would fail so that is actually a uh, uh, nfs v3 access data to 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 an hdfs now support for running hadoop on microsoft windows yes all you have we have seen is uh, when it comes to downloading hadoop always we will do it on a unix but uh, 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 but we will not have anybody working on one x version on windows uh, yes that can be done actually where you have, where you have to install uh, interface a, a system a file called as syswin and uh, once you install that you can have uh, the hadoop installed but <coughs> no one uh, would dare to do that because everybody is comfortable working uh, uh, unix on hadoop but uh, uh, we can do that with hd insight uh, with we can work on windows binary comparably for map application built on hd hadoop 1.x substantial amount of integration testing with the rest of projects in the ecosystem uh, uh, is the few advantages so these are the advantages that we can see so other than this uh, uh, I also wanted to go through something called as Hadoop architecture Hadoop architecture uh, you have a very good wonderful Hadoop architecture okay uh, this is from Apache is always good for everybody who wants to make their career in Hadoop. It's good for them to go through this particular HDFS architecture guide. You'll see you have so much of data available here and what, how uh, you stream the data, uh, what happens when hardware fails, uh, what is moving computation is cheaper than moving data and you also have more information about the name nodes and the data node now i wanted to look at this picture that's i wanted to look at this picture how the architecture architecture of hadoop is designed so i wanted to make you understand that is the reason i want all of you go to through this book because uh, yes uh, in a classroom probably uh, we'll get to know 90 percent of the things will explain but there are certain things probably uh, you we may not be discussing uh, for that, uh, my suggestion is to go through this book and trying to understand the architecture. Because once you understand the architecture, then it becomes easy for you to understand the MapReduce architecture. If you understand MapReduce 100%, then you can become a Hadoop good, good Hadoop developer. So now if you look at the architecture of Hadoop, now here we have a name node. A name node has metadata and metadata has name, replications. And, uh, and the metadata has uh, log files, uh, transactional data as well, and the namespaces. So that is the content of the metadata. So metadata, now here you have a client, and these are certain data nodes here, and this is the rack, 
rack has three nodes here and this rack has two nodes here so in each of the node you have, you'll see the green boxes we call them as the blocks so so every every black block is being replicated every block is being replicated now <coughs> if a client wants to do any operation either it is read or write the client would always go to the name node okay the client would name go to the name node and it would check the metadata about the information on the blocks which are on the data nodes so now here each block they'll get the information from different from this rack okay and again the read operation would be performed on each the client is again you know trying to write something this client is trying to read something always every client so one client can read at the same time one client can write on the same time so this is it did actually to uh, support the discussion that we had so name node client reading the data from different nodes of a different rack a client writing the data onto onto different blocks of different geographical locations so parallelly if you look at this client is trying to write it parallelly okay this client is trying to, to read it from a different location of a different rack so this is the diagram always you have to be uh, uh, remembering okay so the differences you have to be uh, uh, thoroughly please uh, the, uh, uh, remember not only that as when you look at the history of Hadoop when you look at the history of Hadoop uh, there are certain uh, when you look at the history of Hadoop how the Hadoop come into existence we have seen that you know it is a part of uh, the Nutch and the Nutch and uh, it's a part of again Lu Lucene uh, developed by a uh, tough cutting now here their architecture the Lucene could not scale uh, so much of data on the web so that's when Google released you know in 2003 uh, Google has come up with something called as Google file system and map reduce so when it comes to releasing the papers on Google file system and map reduce I would like to mention I would like to uh, introduce two of the very important people who actually you know contributed so much uh, uh, when uh, uh, when uh, when it comes to map reduce uh, uh, again go to Google uh, uh, say Sanjay I believe Sanjay Gemawat Google talk yes right just go through this slide okay go to this and uh, you will have uh, all the details uh, Google's map is in a round the table discussion I uh, wanted you to go through this Sanjay Gemawat and you also have somebody right beside him and he's Jeff Dean you know Jeff Dean and uh, the person uh, he is Sanjay and he is Jeff Dean these two are the people who actually contributed so much when it comes to map radio so in their 2003 and 2004 both of them released uh, uh, good papers good white papers on map radios so I want to explain they actually explain what is that they made when it comes to map radios how actually the performance of the processing increased when it when it comes to map radios so they have well explained so I, I want all of you to go through this this is very good articles that you have the good video they want to listen I want to learn more so to conclude our discussion on Hadoop and map radios please go through this Hadoop architecture guide where you have so many use cases and all the definitions really pertaining to your cluster and uh, pertaining to the cluster of 1.x and please go through the differences whatever you have on 1.x and 2.x and uh, yes so in the future sessions we will be also studying the architecture of 2.x thank you